A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousand generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished him who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then, either by you or by your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by alien who lives with you. In the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the seas and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. Responsorial Psalm Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear enlightening the eyes. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, 
and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. We are still following the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to the Promised Land. The Israelites, as we saw in the past readings, acknowledge God's presence in their journey. We saw that at times, the Israelites complained when their needs were not met, and so they complained to Moses, and Moses would also refer it to God. Moses was the mediator between God and his people. God raised the Israelites as a nation, and he wanted them to live their lives with him, as he was always with them throughout their journey. They wandered in the desert, but God came to their rescue as usual. He guided their way through his presence in the pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. Despite of God's goodness, people kept on sinning. However, in order for God to remain with His people, people had to change their ways, and they should behave well towards God and towards one another. So, in today's first reading, God gave the people His Ten Commandments that might guide them in their proper behavior towards Him and towards one another. In them, God wants the people to know that He is the only God, that they should worship, and they should make His name holy in all their actions. In their desert experiences, there was always the temptation to have other gods, especially that the Israelites seemed to fail to recognize God's action in their lives. The other part of the Ten Commandments was all about loving their neighbor, which is expressed in honoring one's parents on the part of the children and being true to one another by not creating false stories for different reasons. They were a community. Therefore, in these commandments, God was so clear telling them to be faithful to their spouses. These commandments are not only applied in the lives of the Israelites who were wandering in the desert of sin. These commandments are very much valid for all of us, especially that during our time, in a way, we too are wandering in the desert of modern times, influenced by the modern technologies and the modern way of living in the world of secularism. Our world is a place which, I would say, more dangerous than the desert experiences of the Israelites. In our world, we need to be extra careful in what we do, because there is a greater opportunity to sin in different ways. The first part of the commandments 
which refers to God, is easily violated, especially with, with what the modern secularized world is offering to us. Therefore, in this situation, we need more discernment. When we want to consider the Ten Commandments seriously, we need to discern. Discernment, according to St. Ignatius of Loyola, involves prior and weighing facts and feelings about the several good choices which ultimately leads to a choice about what is best fit for our individual. Let us apply this to our daily living. And let us pray to God that He may always enlighten us in every decision that we take especially when it involves God and neighbor. Let us pray. Loving Father, I pray that I accept the truth of your word, that I turn my ear to listen intently to your words of wisdom and that I open my heart and understand all you say in your word of truth. For I know that to treasure up your word in my heart is indeed wisdom, and to love and fear the Lord is the gateway to discernment. Give me discernment in my heart, I pray, and increase my knowledge and understanding so that I may come to know you more and love you better. Guard my heart, I pray, so that I may follow you in your truth all the days of my life. For it is my heart that desires to know you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>